So hi, I'm Chris with the OI Art Festival. I'm here with um, Nicholas Olsberg, and um, I still cannot believe how lucky we, lucky we are to have you as an advisor. And of all the things that you've already done for us, we're just blown away, but one of the coolest things, of course, is the Gordon Matta Clark garbage wall. And um, could you maybe, um, that we're gonna be building at the mob shop with um, Greg Prince over there, and could you maybe just um, tell me about the significance of this piece of the garbage wall? Yeah, um, Gordon Matterclark, um struggling young artist at the time, th on the first Earth Day in 1970 um, at St. Mark's Church in the village in New York, constructed this mesh frame wall, empty wall, and filled it with local garbage, trash from the streets of the East Village, um, as a sort of demonstration of the growing crisis of waste in society. Um, as everything he did, as all provocative art does, was both beautiful and incredibly challenging. Nobody quite knew what it was at first, and the more you looked at it, the more you started to realize what was happening. Um, I never did see it. Um, a year later, he did it under the Brooklyn Bridge uh, in a smaller version. And in the last years, he died very young, 1978, in the last years, um, it's been recreated 15 times around the world, in big cities, in museums, and so on and so forth. This is the first time that a small town's done it on the main street. Mm -hmm. And that's the really cool thing about this, is we're mm -hmm. showing it um, where everyone's going to come across it unexpectedly. And Gordon, I call him that, I never met him, but um, he, he, he questioned what a work of art was. He said, is it me making it? Is it the person viewing it that came to see it? Or is it that someone that happened on it and was surprised? And he said, the best work of art is the one that you happen on by surprise. Um, and we're hoping that people will come down the street, not know what it is, and happen upon this. And that's, they're going to think about waste in society and so on and so forth. One of the things we're doing is to make it themed. It's outside a bicycle shop, which is one of the early mechanical instruments in the world, one of the early machines even though it's powered by man. So we're thinking that the garbage we use to fill it will be machine age stuff, mm -hmm. hardware, used hardware, used software, used computer crap, um, used audio crap, used bicycle crap. Mm -hmm. um, we'll all go in there and we'll see how much unnecessary replacement goes on in society. I think that's one of the points that he was making in all his work, because he it's always intervening in these buildings that are about to be demolished, and the main question is why tear them down? We have their space. They provide shelter, that's what architecture is. Why do we need more of it? We have enough. So this idea, and you know, we were way ahead of now in the early, early 70s. As you remember, we were really environmentally acutely aware. Mm -hmm. And with the very serious questions raising at that time about the environment because of the oil crisis and everything else in 1973, but even before then, Rachel Carson's book on the, the Silent Spring and so on. Let's see, we have a, a third member of the yes, we interview do. group who yes, is going to say something, make, make her <laughs> needs known, her interests known as well. So <laughs> one thing I'm, I'm also interested in is um, what place does art from trash have in, in, in the general spectrum of art? I'm probably the wrong one to ask. I think you're going to ask other people who know more about the disc, whole discussion around art and, and waste and art in the environment. But I think the questions of art and the environment are everywhere. I'm working now with Maya Lin, who, the architect and artist who did the Vietnam Memorial, whose work is more and more about the threat to the planet in one way or the other. And she's doing a, a series of installations on the Columbia River um, it's about how you know in destroying the environment you also destroy the entire human cultures mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. and we're doing both at the same time now so a lot of artists asking these questions um, and some of them doing it by recycling the waste materials that are in the environment mm -hmm. others by re recording that Again, back in the 19, 1970s, photographers in the new topography movement like Louis Paltz and Joe Deal and so on were 
acutely aware of what was going on. Mm -hmm. Robert Adams, these scathing photographic art surveys of new industrial parks and suburban wastelands being constructed in the Colorado front range, things like that. So that, that, that awareness has always been there. And I think, the, I think in, in some ways it's not a question of a movement that's very big right now. It's a question of trying to revive the same questions we were asking back in the 1970s. Mm -hmm. I think that's one thing the Ohio Art Festival is going to be doing is bring it back to that kind of discussion that's humorous and playful as well as you know deeply serious about what it's about it may take humorous and witty forms like Gordon's work mm -hmm. always did mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you also initiated this event that's going to be at UCSB um, around focused on Gordon Matter Clark and so can you maybe just talk about what's what's going to happen there um, yeah, there's two things. Uh, Gordon Matterclark's work, most, the results are many things, as I was just saying. He said that he didn't know what the work of art was, but one of the work, things that was a work of art was him filming himself doing it. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a wonderful series of films of his, and a beautiful guy with an uh, incredibly balletic way of sort of performing these works that he m made, which are sort of done with blocks and tackle, um, in deserted buildings and he's stripping down walls and cutting holes and pulling things down and um, making films of this kind of ballet that he does to produce that work. So his wife's daughter, who is the, um, will be the artistic administrator of his estate um, in the end, um, and is very, very n knowledgeable and eloquent about his work, is coming to present some of these short films mm -hmm. of his. Um, and that's in the evening. The afternoon, she and I are going to have a long conversation about who Gordon Maddoclark was, um, which is a subject I can go on about a long, <laughs> long time. Mm -hmm. uh, start now, if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> He's a critical figure. Um, this uh, architect and artist. He was trained as an architect, not an artist. He was a performer too, so he did all of these things. He drew beautifully, so he did every single thing that an artist can conceivably do. And he also managed to, to talk and to write very well in three languages, mm, wow. English, Spanish, and French, which are the three aspects of his heritage. Another aspect is partially Isamu Noguchi, the great American sculptor, was his mother's little lover shortly after he was born, so he was a kind of a stepfather as well. So all these different places, Roberto Mata from Chile and uh, Mata living in Paris, which was a key member of the Surrealist movement. Um, and then his sort of Japanese origins as well, mm -hmm. architect and artist, performer and creator. So is all of these things coming t together in this most amazing way. And he's basically just someone whose, I think, background and um, origins were so deeply rooted in experimental art that he felt he could experiment as much as he, w as he pleased. So there were no rules for him mm -hmm. whatsoever, right from the beginning. So the work is totally uh, 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 original and usually inspired. So it's not his festival, but um, <laughs> to some extent, he's the spirit behind it. Yeah, yeah, great, great. Well, I love it. We love it. And um, so the second artist that you also brought in is Enrico Natali, who's a local yeah. um, photographer here. And um, you cura curated six pieces um, of his of his images. And so um, what was your thinking behind that? Thinking number one was if you were going to have, and it's something we all talked about as the festival was forming, having some special exhibitions that were curated. Um, as well as the I Invitational show. Um, and the Invitational would, by that means, maybe get clearer focus because of what the special exhibitions were, but also mm -hmm. draw people to it because of who was being shown and the work was being shown in the special shows. So I thought in having an Ohio artist was a really useful thing to do. Having one that had never really been seen here and wasn't really well known in Ohio would also be good. He's published Enrico Natale's work is 
is published and ex exhibited other places, not w w widely known work. Um, uh, and he struck me as an interesting, very Ohio-ish kind of figure mm -hmm. in that he, he came here to live off the grid. He's a uh, Tolstoyan. His son, Andre, who's my good friend as well as his son, was n named after Prince Andre in War and Peace. Mm -hmm. and, um, so there's this whole sort of idea of a culture that you can develop on your own land, in your own way, that's more respectful to the environment and to history and so on. And they've done that, Enrico and his wife N N N Nadia up on their ranch um, way up in Matilaha mm -hmm. Canyon, li living essentially off the grid and independently for lo many long, long years. He was so busy doing that that he stopped doing photography. Mm. And only in the last years has he be become a little too old maybe to run the ranch on his own, has he been able to turn back to photography. And one of the things he did was to go down to LA and look at, look for these murals um, <coughs> that appear in so many different places. A lot of people have recorded them, um, but they've tended to photograph them straight. Mm -hmm. Just the image that's in the mural is it in the photo. What Enrico has done every time is pose the mural, if I can put it that way, mm -hmm. so that the mural is framed and placed in the, the setting where it is. So you see the red standpipe uh, or the rusty hurricane fence against which this mural may sit or the trash heap beside it. You mm -hmm. see pretty desolate and despairing parts of the urban world out of which these little works of art or big works of art sort of blossom. And I think there's a wonderfully moving qualities work in that regard. Mm -hmm. So it's not sort of a documentation of these works of art at all. It's about the life that they have in the place where they are. And he records that in that way. He records it also because he shows new ones. So he'll show the same site with a new mural on it. Or he'll show a, a small change in mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. um, so they become very vital. Mm -hmm. And um, these pieces or these, these um, photographs are going to be shown alongside um, pieces that are coming in through our juried show and you say that there's going to be this conversation and, and uh, could you please explain yeah, that? Yeah, that's that a works? really good way to put that, I think, that there's a always be, with the, all the special shows that are going up, there's going to be a clear conversation going on between them and the juried works which are about the same theme. Maybe the joy to work will break n new ground mm -hmm. and we'll start to see something there that no one yet has explored. Maybe there'll be new ways of using materials and ideas and, and uh, images that we, we have seen before, but now we, there's a twist on them. Mm. So uh, I'm hoping very much that um, Enrico's work from the present, but it's in a tr tradition. Mm -hmm. Uh, Gordon Matterclock's work from the past um, that was incredibly innovative in its own day. Um, maybe they're going to come into dialogue with things that are breaking new ground, just as Gordon's mm -hmm. Garbage War broke new ground in 1970. Mm -hmm. And um so our juried exhibition is going to be in, in the shops here in downtown Ojai from, you know, um, um, pharmacy and, and restaurants, bars, the cleaners and so forth. And so is there anything there that concerns you or, or, or on the contrary, or do you think it's, it's interesting or, or what, what is your take on that? I, I, I think the idea is, I think to be able to see ideas wherever you go mm -hmm. and to see them all over the place in a community is terrific. Um, and you know, you're gonna come across some of them by chance and you're gonna go to some of them because you want to see them. Mm -hmm. And that mix is also gonna be very, very nice. I don't like museums. I directed one for years and I'm very involved with them, but I don't know that art's always best seen in museums. I think it's best seen where you didn't want to see it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the um, so so one of the concerns that was voiced in um, um, or you know you can maybe think about is is that the art is not going to be lit the way it would be lit in a gallery or in a, in a museum and so is that of any concern or or if the artists know that mm -hmm. 
I think it's quite the, the reverse. Let them try to find ways to show work that they know is going to mm -hmm. be seen in busy environments where it doesn't stand alone, where it's not under lights of its own, mm. where it's not hung, mm. um, and let them see if they can compete with that environment. It's like a, a cabaret singer. You've got to be able to s sing in a way that gets people's attention while they're eating a meal and trying to chat. Mm -hmm. And you've got to stop them talking and let them look at you and hear what you're singing. Well, if the artist can think like that, you're going into a r restaurant space, um, people are looking at many different things, including menus um, and each other mm -hmm. and their food. How do you attract their attention in that setting? And how do you make a work that's going to stand alone, have that strength in an environment where it can't be specially mm -hmm. lit mm -hmm. and specially mm -hmm. presented? So I think it's, I think that's interesting mm -hmm. in its mm -hmm. own way. Mm -hmm. And so um, you're familiar, of course, with Ojai because you live here. And um, so what do, you, um, what do you think this show, this festival that we're putting on here with all the different parts <coughs> is going <coughs> to, in the end, mean for Ojai? I hope it means that art doesn't, that art can stop being, things, being inspirational and beautiful and all the things that people say about it. Come and admire, come explore the beauty of the world through art. Come explore the horrors of the world through art might be a very good way we could present this as well. Um, I think you've got to think of art as a, one of the languages we use to talk about things that need to be, need to be talked about. Mm -hmm. And the, it's a more open-ended kind of language, hopefully very, a, a very generous one that allows you to think what you think, but puts w works out there that make you think. So Ohai doesn't think, Ohai, <laughs> Ohai meditates, but it doesn't think. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe this show will make Ohai both meditate and think. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very, very yeah. much. Thank you.